Assalamu alaikum everybody. How are you all? Uh, before anybody would start to text me up in the chat box, I would be inshallah uploading both of the lectures today and uh, that day's lecture on YouTube by today, inshallah. Okay, so do not ask me for that. All right. Okay, starting up. Uh, we have already discussed some of the basics of antidepressants in our last lecture. And Today, we are going to talk about specifically selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which are also known as SSRIs, okay? Uh, before I start up, somebody in the last lecture asked me, is, is deficiency of nutrients in the body is a good excuse to be angry when you are fasting? So. Uh, of course, anybody on earth would obviously say no, but I had to support it. Uh, so you see here uh, is a hadith that you see Abu Hurairah reported that Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, fast is a shield. When one of you is fasting, he should neither behave in an absence manner nor foolishly. If a man fights or abuses him, he should say, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. So that is just indicating. Can you all hear me better? Somebody just text me up that they can't hear me. Can you hear me? Please text me. Okay, yes. Okay, I'm getting the messages that yes, you can hear. Okay, so the thing is, maybe you can connect your, maybe you can disconnect your, uh, headphones and then try to dash them again because everybody can hear me except you okay so the thing is you see you i'm fasting i'm fasting it's stupidity toys it means that in fasting no matter what if you're angry you're you're not at all allowed to shed off that anger on others it's unethical and it does not represent our religion right Secondly, um, I have attached this surah, and if you know context of this surah, uh, now I'm talking about in respect to antidepressants. So you see, uh, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did not receive re a revelation for quite a time, and he was very depressed. He thought maybe Allah Taala is angry with him. Okay, so in response to that, Allah Taala, uh, you know, gave this surah. Uh, which is named Surah Duha. And if, guys, I would recommend every one of you to read it, to go through its uh, translation, and then look at the context that exactly when was the era, when it was, uh, you know, uh, revealed and everything. So you will get to know that even the prophets, right, who are so close and dear to Allah Ta'ala also experience depression. And then Allah Ta'ala says in the surah that, uh, you know, after every, uh, after the day there's night and after night there's a day. So, you know, after every difficulty, there comes a time when difficulties will be eased up and everything will be good, right? So always depression lasts for a certain amount of time. The only thing is this, you uh, muster up the courage and you try to get out of it. I recommend every one of you to please uh, read its translation and go through, uh, uh, you know, tafsir of the surah. Okay. Now, starting up the pharmacology of antidepressant drugs. So we are right now discussing SSRIs. In the next class, we'll be discussing TCAs and SNRIs, and then the list goes on. Uh, again. Uh, this is uh, just a reinforcement. You see, the, the difference between a depressed person and a non-depressed person is this, is that if a person is depressed, you see their brain activity is like not there, okay? It means that they're not thinking, all right? That's why their PET scan could not show any function, right? However, a non-depressed person is thinking. So if you're depressed and you are thinking about the situation, okay? And if you are... Uh, recalling and if you're uh, thinking that I could have done this and 
uh, why not this why did not ha this happen and you know all of those things so if you're thinking and if you're caring about other things in your surrounding it means that you're not depressed you are in a stress situation okay which will inshallah last temporarily the only thing is this you just have to give that stress situation some time to heal itself right again uh this is one thing which i want you to sketch on a paper and then put it on your wall so that uh, that wall will help you to remember this thing forever because i tell you um i think ever since i've started talking to you guys uh you hear me saying the word serotonin dopamine and everything so frequently so you should know the pathway of all of these that where exactly uh the neurotransmitters are released and where exactly they are going and wh what exactly is happening right so you should know its function by heart right now we are talking about serotonin reuptake inhibitors so it means that we are giving medicines to elevate mood to enhance memory to enhance sleep to enhance cognition right okay so our uh, our topic of the day is serotonin and serotonin looks like this right okay a mind hypothesis of depression we talked about it uh, in the previous class and by the way uh, you see wait by the way uh, this drug that is reserpine okay so this drug is a drug let's say if i have a rat in my lab okay and if i want to cause depression in that rat so what would i do is this i would administer this drug to that rat that is the uh, reserpine okay so it would actually deplete all of the um all of the biogenic amines okay that is norepinephrine 5ht dopamine and it will it will cause severe depression in that rat okay uh so our target is to enhance the uh quantity of norepinephrine and serotonin in order to tackle with depression okay all right so uh before i begin up with uh, ssris i want to tell you all that there is another class of drug which is called tca and then we have monoamine oxidase inhibitors so they do have some side effects that is why we don't take tcas and uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors that frequently and they they are largely replaced by uh, ssris which is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor okay because ssris have fewer side effects um again a mnemonic for you guys so that you will remember the drug's name forever wait i have a message ma'am now recipient is not used due to long duration of action adverse effect uh rabia i just told you that this drug can do that okay all right can induce depression okay all right so ssris um, if you want to go through the mnemonic okay it's effective for sadness panic compulsion so that is uh, effective uh, is for escitalopram and then uh, we have flu uh, fluvoxamine flu floxetine sertraline para uh, paroxetine and then we have citalopram all right so these are uh, citalopram and floxetine are racemic mixture of uh, which representative s enantiomers are the more po potent inhibitors of serotonin reuptake pump and then uh, when we talk about citalopram so it's a pure s enantiomer of citalopram okay all right now talking about uh, the entire how exactly of uh, a high exactly serotonin is released in the synaptic cleft right so you guys see here that first of all we have tryptophan right now tryptophan is being converted into 5 hydroxy tryptophan and then it is converted into 5 hydroxy tryptamine and then this tryptamine um basically um it goes into the vesicle and then it's been converted into the neurotransmitter that is serotonin right and then the serotonin if you remember we studied about the um, uh, about different um, classes of serotonin receptors right 
So these are all here and then they would produce the action accordingly. Some would enhance um, ionic uptake and some would uh, work by G protein coupled receptors, right? And now you see in the synaptic cleft, okay, serotonin would actually uh, can be reuptaken, okay? Now the goal of serotonin reuptake inhibitors is this, that they actually block this particular receptor transporter, okay? They inhibit reuptake of serotonin, okay? So that uh, the, the amount of serotonin would actually be enhanced within the synaptic cleft. Okay, all right. Uh, now on the uh, right side of the screen, I have attached uh, images of the food uh, which would enhance uh, tryptophan in your body, right? So you see we have eggs and then we have spirulina. Guys, I want you to go through spirulina, all right? And I want you to Google that. I want to see, uh, I want you to search it on YouTube uh, because I tell you some bit of it uh, to you that this is spirulina is actually cyanobacteria. Okay, it's a blue-green algae and this blue-green algae is usually uh, found in sea and oceans and stuff like that. Okay, and it this spirulina is actually the main producer of oxygen on earth, right? Now, what uh, nowadays, uh, this is a booming business, by the way, that uh, since this is spirulina, okay, this is uh, rich with vitamins, minerals, and on top of it, it is rich with vitamin B12, okay? So do Google this thing and uh, do search that how exactly you can, um, you know, uh, make... Uh, the whole lot of spirulina at your home and maybe you can start up a business um, by producing spirulina you can produce capsules of this so just search it out okay anyways so the other things that can enhance tryptophan uh, uh, tryptophan quantity in our body is fish then we have poultry milk yogurt sesame seeds beef uh, grains, legumes, potatoes, and bananas. So you see, that is why we are so happy when we eat French fries and we, when we eat bananas, right? Because they provide us uh, with tryptophan and then uh, all of the happy hormones are released, right? Okay, so uh, how exactly uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors are working? They, of course, block reuptake of serotonin and they also have little blocking activity on muscarinic alpha adrenergic and histaminic H1 receptors. Okay, very little, very, very little. Okay, so leading to increased concentration of the neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft and ultimately to greater postsynaptic neuronal activity. Okay, as I've said, our major goal is to increase serotonin concentration within the synaptic cleft. Now, typically take uh, at least two weeks to produce significant improvement in mood and maximum benefit may require up to 12 weeks or more. So approximately 40% of depressed patients treated with adequate doses for four to eight weeks do not respond to antidepressant agents. Patients who do not repress to one antidepressant may respond to another. So you see, the main thing is this, that you switch the medicine because when we talk about antidepressants, so we actually see that which antidepressant is actually fitting uh, on a person, okay? So we give the medication accordingly. So the uses of uh, SSRIs is, it is used to treat major depression, obsessive compulsive uh, disorder, which is OCD. Then we have bulimia nervosa. Now, what is this? This is this, that you binge eat and then you induce vomiting to yourself then you eat again, then you again vomit, then you eat again. So you see, it is the entire cycle. So if a patient is going through this uh, condition, so floxetine can be administered to that person. Then we have anxiety disorders. And in this anxiety disorders, all of the anxiety disorders that I am talking about, either it's general anxiety disorder or occupational or whatever, okay? 
So chronic uh, etc. are treated by administering SSRIs. And one more thing, if benzodiazepines are co-administered with SSRIs, so basically instead of monotherapy, if both of the drugs are given together, so uh, treatment is more beneficial, okay? Treatment is much better. Then we have premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It is this that uh, a few weeks before uh, the mens, uh, the mens uh, when exactly the menses would start, the lady would feel extremely upset, extremely depressed, would, would have extreme case of anxiety. And then um, as soon as the lady would hit the menses, then, uh, you know, after two or three days, all of the these symptoms would go away. All of the uh, all of a sudden, the lady would start to feel better. Uh, talking about pharmacokinetics of SSRIs, so these are well absorbed after oral administration. Peak levels are seen in approximately two to eight hours on average. Food has little effect on absorption. Only sertraline uh, undergoes significant first bypass metabolism. So plasma half-lives that range between uh, 16 to 36 hours. Metabolism by cytochrome P450 dependent enzymes and glucuronide or sulfate conjugation occur extensively. So floxic floxetine differs from other members of the class in two respects. First, it has a much longer half-life, which is 50 hours, and it's available a sustained release preparation. So you just have to take once, once uh, you have to take the dose once a week, okay? So second is the metabolite of S enantiomer, S nor fluoxetine is a potent, is as potent as the parent compound. So the half-life of the metabolite, metabolite is quite long, averaging 10 days. So fluoxetine and peroxetine are potent inhibitors of hepatic cytochrome P450, isozyme responsible for elimination of TCAs, neuroleptic drugs, and other antiarrhythmic and beta-adrenergic antagonist drugs. So you see, uh, we do hear about slow metabolizers or poor metabolizers. So that means when these people are taking the medication, they have to take extreme care, right? So Excretion of SSRIs is primarily through kidneys, except for peroxidin and sertraline, which also undergo fecal excretion, 50 to 35 to 50%. And uh, doses of all these drugs should be adjusted downward in patients with hepatic impairment. Now, side effects. Side effects is anxiety, agitation, and then we have bruxism. So bruxism is this, that a person will grind their teeth, okay? And sometimes um, the side effect can be that extensive that even if when the person would wake up, they would be grinding their teeth when they're sleeping, right? So it is that, um, that bad, okay? Then we have sexual dysfunction and then we have weight loss. Adverse effect is headache, sweating, anxiety, agitation, uh, your favorite nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, weakness, and fatigue. Then we have sexual dysfunction. One option for managing SSRI-induced sexual dysfunction is to replace the offending antidepressants with another antidepressant, which has fewer side effects, okay, such as bupro, uh, bupropion and mirtazapine. So alternatively, the dose of the drug may be reduced in men with erectile dysfunction and depression. Treatment with uh, sildenafil, verdenafil, or tadalafil may improve sexual function. Changes in weight, as we have already discussed, sleep disturbances. Now, you see, insomnia is this, that a person cannot sleep and they find it difficult. So, okay, so in that case, you administer Peroxidine and flumox, uh, fluoxamine, okay, to cause sedation. In the other case, we have somnolence, which is also an adverse effect of this drug. It is this, that any time of the day, I would have extreme urge to sleep, okay? This is somnolence, okay? So 
in order to treat this condition, obviously I don't want to fall asleep at work, okay? So in order to treat this, we have activating antidepressants such as fluoxetine and sertraline. Now, societal ideation specifically, now this slide is basically focused more on children, okay? So when we administer SSRIs to children, we have to take extreme care that out of 50, one child would have suicidal thoughts, okay? So whenever we are giving this uh, class of drug to any child, so we have to ensure that they're not, under, they're not suffering depression and they don't have suicidal thoughts, okay? So fluoxetine, sertraline, and flu, uh, fluoxamine are FDA approved for use, on, use in children to treat OCD and fluoxetine is approved to treat childhood depression. Uh, when we talk about toxicity, so it causes serotonin syndrome. Now, if you remember, I have already discussed serotonin syndrome with you all, right? So uh, this is a slide you can pause and you can talk about it because you should know that it causes midriasis, shivering, sweating, tachycardia, and then hyperactivity, the temperature of the body goes high, heartbeat goes high and all of things, okay? So this slide I have attached so you know how exactly you can actually manage it out as well. Then seizures, seizures are also, uh, the seizures are not that common, but they do happen if you're taking SRIs because of the reason uh, SSRIs basically reduce stress threshold, okay, of causing seizures, okay, so that is why the chances of getting seizures increase rapidly. Then we have drug interactions, so if there is, uh, uh, there is already increased quantity of serotonin in the body, so obviously serotonin syndrome would be there, uh, symptoms as we have already discussed, uh, sweating, rigidity, Myoclonus. Myoclonus is uh, spasming of the muscle all of a sudden, okay? Then we have hyperthermia, ANS, is instability, seizures. Then we have drugs, which actually do not go well with SSRIs. These are monamine oxidase inhibitors, TCAs, and miperidine. Uh, one thing I have to tell you all that there has to be a washout period. Okay, let's say if I am taking SSRIs and the other day doctor prescribed me TCA, so I have to give a window of let's say uh, two weeks, okay, or as per the doctor's instruction so that both of the drugs will not interact and both of the drugs will not produce adverse effects in me. Uh, then is most inhibit, um, as we have already discussed that they're working uh, by the and they're metabolizing because of the cytochrome P50. So most inhibit cytochrome P450, in particular, fluvoxamine and fluoxidine. Important interaction includes increased level of benzodiazepine in treatment of anxiety disorders. Citalopram is safer for interactions. That is it, that is it everybody. Thank you so much.